Alright, so look, I'll start off this video by asking you, have you heard of the infinite monkey theorem? You know, where it's like we have a bunch of monkeys and then they are like typing on the typewriter and then given infinite time, one of these monkeys will eventually type out like some work of Shakespeare, right? If you take a bunch of randomness, you will usually get a very similar result. So for example, let me show you, right? If I were to, let's say, take a part, which is what I'm going to do in the video, right? But if I were to take a part and if I were to say, okay, the part has like, let's say a box of space where it's able to be summoned. And then after a bit of time, it just disappears, right? And so we basically have a, like a box where a bunch of parts will spawn in and then disappear in a random location. If we do it fast enough, you'll begin to notice how there's almost like a weird pattern going on, even though it should be random, right? Even though there shouldn't really be a pattern, but there somewhat is. So randomness can still result in patterns. And this is because of like uh, ways that like math works. And also because randomness isn't technically random, it just gets its randomness from stuff we can't really measure like um i know cloudflare you, you know how sometimes you log into a website and it's like oh yeah give us a second you know cloudflare is checking your security so cloudflare for its randomness systems they have like a whole wall full of lava lamps and like a camera like is there to track the lava lamps and then the camera basically like takes all of those colors and then turns that into like a secure random code it's not technically random because if you know how the stuff thing works if like if you know how the formula works you know to turn the colors into numbers then it's not random to you but as long as you don't know that formula then it's random so that's how this stuff works right even though to us it's random to the computer it's technically not because how can you make a random number on a computer you you can't so what i was wondering is what if i do the same thing so what if i basically create like an invisible bounding box which i can actually do right now by just calling this bound right let's just make it anchored can collide to false can carry false can touch false sure and then let's just make it very big so this is going to be our bounding box okay which i'll also make uh invisible if basically every single tick right what if i create create a new part and I place it somewhere inside of this box, right? So just a random position inside of this box. Um, and then just, I just keep summoning more and more parts. And then like after a second, I'll like delete the first part and so on and so on. So they don't like fully clog up the box. Would it be possible to have the parts at some point start to like create like a shape, right? So, cause I'm thinking right now, if we make a lot of parts and we sum them to be at random locations, it's probably going to look very cluttered and messy because that's where randomness works. Randomness will try to kind of spread its itself out. So could the randomness here make it so that like even for a split second all of the parts somewhat resemble a house? Like they all kind of uh, together end up like in this like house formation instead of being like just randomly cluttered like wherever they will be. And so I am curious about this right? So the very first thing we actually need to do then is script the entire process. Now I know right now you're probably thinking like oh yeah oh yeah bro just script and then you know get to the good part. This is the good part bro. Scripting is the fun part. Like sure later we'll see all the cool result of the parts like being summoned around but it's only a cool result once you actually see what goes into scripting it right so i promise you right now even if you're a beginner even if you've never scripted before i'll explain it as if you're like five years old all right so here's the thing we have one part which is in replicated storage right in short in roblox replicated storage just means that like it's it exists as data but it's not in the actual like visible game and what i'll do with this part is i'll set it to be anchored because i don't want it to be affected by gravity and so yeah so what i can do is i can create a script instead of server script service okay and then we just need to make two quick variables one for the bounding box one for the part. This isn't technically necessary, but it's just there to like, so that I don't have to keep typing like, oh yeah, workspace.bound or like game.replicatedStorage.part. Instead, I can just access their variable, right? So for bound, I can say bound, right? Like so. And then for the part, I can just do game replicated storage part. And then if I want to do something every single tick, I just need to do game run service heartbeat connect function like so basically every single time the game updates itself right this is what this is the quickest way we can do anything whatever code we put here will run and so you know we can just create a new part so we can say local new part is equal to parts clone but here's the thing what do we do now okay how do we position the part to be somewhere randomly inside of this bounding box well okay how about this right how about the first step would be to position the part just in the middle of the bound. Because here's the thing, if I say something like new part dot position is equal to bound dot position, the position of both of these parts is directly like in the middle of them. So if I do this, this line of code will take the part and it will just put it right inside of this box. And I can actually show this to you by setting the parent to the workspace, because then if it's in the workspace, we can actually see it, right? Yeah, so now it's con consistently summoning a bunch of parts and they're not spreading across like the entire bounding box. Okay, so we can't really do that, but we do still probably need the bound position for something. So I can turn it into a variable, local b pause is equal to bound dot position. Then what we need to do is we just need to basically randomly generate coordinates from this angle 
all the way to this angle. So in a diagonal way, which will cover the entire box, I want to figure out how to make the coordinates random. And the way I can do this is actually by using the size of the box. This size is X, Y, and Z. And hopefully like you're smart enough to know that Y means a vertical coordinate. So 28 basically means it's 28 studs high. If I make it really like short like this, then the Y becomes one because now it's one block high, right? So the thing is, if this part gets summoned over here, and then let's say I just want to randomize the part's Y coordinate, right? So because the part is going to summon directly in the middle, then it has two options. It can either go up so I can like add on the Y or it can go down, meaning I can subtract from the Y. But here's the thing, because I want it to be in the bounds of the box, we have to work with this Y coordinate. So because the part is in the middle, right, we basically have to take this Y coordinate and split it into two because 28 means that it's 28 like on this full length. But if the part is in the middle, we're only dealing with half length. So half length up or half length down. So meaning we have to take this coordinate and divide it by two, which will give us 14. And then we just need to get a random number from negative 14 all the way to positive 14. And so then we'll just take the part's current Y coordinate and add on that random number. So if the random number, let's say, ends up being negative 14, then if we add negative 14, which means we're subtracting a negative 14, the part will go here, right? But it can't go any below because negative 14 is the most lowest we can go. And vice versa, the highest we can go is positive 14. So if I take this part and I add 14 to its Y coordinate, the most it can go is on the top of the box. And then we just need to do this for all the other coordinates, right? And then the random number will just spit out like a random value in between these two, right? So it's not going to always be directly at the bottom or directly at the top. It might be here. And like I said, all we have to do is just do that for every single coordinate as well. So we'll have the bound dot position, but then we also need the bound dot size. So B size is equal to bound dot size. And like I said, we need all of these to be divided in half. So I can just do size divided by two. Note that this actually won't like change the size of the bound. This will just make this variable equal to the size divided by two. So this just creates a brand new value. This doesn't actually change anything about the part's actual size. And so then I need to just say local part position is going to be equal to, so it's going to be bound position. And then we're going to add a vector three, which is just a X, Y, and Z value. And so it needs an X, Y, and a Z, right? So if we start up with the X first, I need to do math dot random. I need to give it the minimum number and the maximum number. And so the minimum number will be the negative X of this B size, right? So it's going to be negative B size dot x and then the highest number will be b size dot x normal and then we just need to literally copy this and then do it for the y and the z as well there we go so that's done and um and that should honestly be it new part dot position is equal to parts position let's see and so if i run this game right now is it gonna work and actually i'm just curious what if i increase the size of this part because the way i coded it it should work uh even when the part is like resized Oh yeah, beautiful. There we go. And right before we get to like the more advanced concepts, I will just say that if you're a beginner and you've been like liking the way that I'm teaching things so far, I do have a course uh, linked in the pinned comment and the description. You can preview it for free, no strings attached. I'm not going to ask for like your uh, credit card number or anything, but if you do like how the course looks for free, then you can buy it. You get my full like six hours of content or something. So do go check that out and do subscribe as well because the uh, silver button is looking mighty attractive, bro. But okay, look, with that being said, okay, we have just successfully created this script okay so now successfully what it's going to do is it's going to summon a bunch of these parts the problem here however is that if i just let it stay running it's just going to be full of parts right so that's an issue we don't want that what do we want is we want each part to basically be alive for like one second and then disappear right and so i can actually do this right now i can just say task dot wait one second and then say new part destroy like so and so if i do it like this let's see what happens there we go. Obviously, this is going a little bit too slow. I could take the part and like I could what happens if I move it around? Oh, look at that. That looks that's pretty cool. Like, sure, I could take the part and I could resize it, right? I, I, I could do this in theory or not in theory, literally in practice. But the thing is, like, it's it's too little parts. That's the problem. When dealing with randomness, we want like as much possible choices as possible. Like if you're trying to get monkeys to type up like Shakespeare, right? Do you want just two monkeys typing infinitely? or like 10 million monkeys. The reason I'm even bringing this up is because this is happening at a very slow rate and that's a problem, okay? And the issue is I can't do this any faster because this is, like I said, this is the fastest way to update anything in the game. However, however, if I take the script and I start to duplicate it, the beauty of this is that every single script then will do that. Every single script will create its own random part, meaning that if I just continuously duplicate these, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna, yeah. 
look at that and if we just like increase the number of scripts we have as well we can have like a lot more of these that's pretty cool and you can already kind of start to see like how there is somewhat of like a pattern and it kind of looks like the minecraft farlands as well which this does look pretty cool but okay right we fixed that issue however the problem is that if we have like 20 script what if i wanted to modify something in each script like i'm not gonna go for through every single script and change something and i can't I, by the way i can't like select all of them and then change all of them in one go i can't do that i have to go to each script and then change it there so I don't want to do that. I want to change it on one line and then have every single script from there on be affected. And what I could actually do is I could make a module script. Module scripts are very confusing, but in short, I can just create a function in here. And a function is like just something that like runs code. And then inside of any single script, I can access this module script and I can just run whatever function is inside of this. So if I just copy this code, right? So if I, yeah, like I can do this and I can just say uh, module. So module is this table dot summon part so what this will do is this will add an item inside of this table called summon part and then i'll make this item equal to a function which will do this but then it also needs the variables that we have over here so i'll take the variables and i'll put them over here like so and so then all we need to do then is just say local module right is equal to require which is how you get a module script game replicated storage module script and then i'll just say module dot summon part like so and so that should be working yeah, there we go. And so then the beauty of this now is that I, I just have one module script and then I can have as many scripts as I want. So if all of these scripts are just listening for one module script, right? Let's see, run. Yeah, look at that. And then let's say if I really wanted to make all of the parts like red for some reason, I don't have to go through every single script and change it. I can just go to this one module script and say, okay, new part dot color is equal to uh, color three dot from RGB. And then I'll just make it red like so or whatever. I don't know, whatever color, right? And it's going to affect every single script. Yeah, look at that. So that's just a quick lesson on module scripts as well. When you're dealing with like a bunch of stuff, a bunch of scripts, and you just want like to have one place where you can just modify it and then everything will change from there, do use module scripts because they're very good for this. And by the way, it's not just for functions. You can, it's literally just a table. So if I wanted to, I could say like module dot um, hello is equal to hello or, some, or something. And then it's just going to have an item inside of the table that's called hello. And I can access it in here as well. I can say module dot hello, which is a string. And then this will be equal to this hello text. So yeah, module scripts are actually very, very flexible. So if you are a beginner and you haven't used these yet, please do, please do look into them. But yeah, honestly, like if I do run this right now, like, I don't know, there's not much happening. I mean, okay, obviously a lot is happening, but you know what I mean? Like they're not making that like house that I wanted, right? They're all almost moving in like this weird pattern and it's weird because there technically isn't a pattern but like I, I guess just my human brain is like picking this up as a pattern even though there is no pattern and like the shadows are beginning to die so i'm probably gonna stop my game i guess i'll actually make this uh a little bit smaller like so now a quick little thing that I actually was curious about is what if we make it so that like the parts almost fade in with color so what i mean by that is like maybe like from this side to this side the parts will like gradually go from one color to another. This doesn't have anything to do with the Shakespeare monkey thing. I just thought it would look cool. And so this should hopefully result in this nice looking gradient-esque color. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's look at that. It's like all red and it's not fully red. It's like going from like orange to red. And there's like a, there's like a very like obvious line. That is so interesting. I mean, okay, it's, it's, it's working from here to here, but here it's completely red. That, that's very interesting. I'm not too sure why that's going on. And honestly, like while we're at it, why not make every single spawned part look at the middle of the bounding box? I know that sounds like, you know, a little confusing, but it's honestly insanely easy. We just say part.cframe is equal to cframe.new. So cframe basically just wants the position, which we already have, part.position, right? And then it needs what to look at. So it needs a position to look at. And because we wanted to look at the middle of the bounding box, we just need to give it the bound dot position. So B position, like so. And if I run the game right now, yeah, look at that. It's like a randomness swirl. Yeah, so I guess this is what happens when you combine randomness and a bunch of advanced math. You get this like, <laughs> why are they white? <laughs> What's going on? Wait, yo, look at that. Oh, that is so interesting. They're, they're changing in regards to the world and not the box. What? Something I was thinking we can do as well is just make it look very nice. What if I just say new parts dot material is equal to enum dot material dot neon. And then what if I make the lighting like very dark? So yeah, so what if what if I take the sun and I like move it like, yeah, all the way here? What's going to happen? Uh, 
And then what if I just take a color correction and I just like tweak th these values? So I just, I can just take the color correction. I can just clone it and I can just like paste it in here. And then is that going to work? So I think making a folder called parts and then just putting every single part inside of that folder would be a lot nicer because now it's like, yeah. Yeah, look at that. And then all we need here is like some nice, like nostalgic music. Now, you, now you know what? Screw the music, bro. Eerie ambience. Let's do this. I mean, we don't have a house, but in a weird way, I honestly preferred this more. I don't know, bro. I feel I feel like randomness in itself is somewhat of a work of art. Because like I said before, right? Computers don't just generate a random number. Nothing's ever random. Everything happens for a reason. And everything eventually at some point will be able to be like pretty determined. So like I said, you know, just like Cloudflare uses like um, lava lamps for its randomness. Who knows? Maybe, maybe each part here showcases one of the lava lamps and the beauty of knowing how to code is that i've managed to turn that data into this very nice looking barrage of very colorful parts that oddly feel very nostalgic i'm not i'm not sure why what if we what if we just make this bigger oh look at that everything that we see here is random but it's not really random because there's something influencing it maybe maybe it's not even radiation or lava lamps but like something is going on in the code like there is a purpose for each position. And I think that if you look at the parts this way, I don't know, it makes them all very interesting to look at and just observe. We're seeing so much data real time. I'm thinking I'll actually just publish this game right now. So I'll just call it um, Visualized Randomness. And it's gonna be in my ByteBlox official group. So just go to Roblox, look up ByteBlox official group, and then you should see this game in the group. And yeah, so like I said before, uh, if you're interested in coding, do check out my course. If you love and adore me as a person, please do subscribe. As always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.